It is great to be here this morning. It's great to be with you. And uh, we're just looking forward to just a wonderful day of worship together. Just a couple of quick announcements to go over this morning. First off, uh, we are super excited about our Christmas Eve service next week. And we just want to invite you to come uh, and enjoy Christmas Eve on Sunday morning with us next, uh, next week. Um, uh, we, we traditionally have a Christmas Eve service in the evening, but because Christmas Eve lands on a Sunday, we're just going to celebrate it in the morning all together. So uh, we just want to invite you uh, next week in the morning just to come and join and, uh, and just celebrate Christ's birth. It's going to be a great time as a family together. Uh, also, men, it's a great time for you to get uh, signed up for the men's retreat. Uh, that's coming up. It's, a, it's a, just a wonderfully encouraging time uh, for all of our guys to get together in January. Um, plus, you get a, a coupon if, uh, if you register. And, uh, we just, uh, and also, we want you to let the church office know uh, so we can get all of our guys together. So that's a great thing. And then finally, uh, there's no Sunday school today. We, we're going to be taking a, a few weeks off as we kind of hit the Christmas season here. So uh, just enjoy visiting with each other at the conclusion of the service today. And, uh, but we do still have high school youth group tonight, uh, Awana and, uh, and junior high youth group coming up this weekend. But then we'll kind of be done for the rest of Christmas. So uh, would you just join me in a word of prayer this morning as we begin our service together? Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We thank you. We praise you today uh, just for your goodness, for your grace in our lives. We thank you, God, uh, this time of year as we look uh, and are reminded of your birth. And this morning, Jesus, as, uh, as we come, as we sing carols and we're reminded of your birth, um, as we open your word and we look to you, God, we just pray that you receive our heart of thanks and worship. We pray, God, right now that you uh, would just begin to speak into our lives. God, we thank you for this time. We pray your blessing on our service this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we begin our service singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
jealousy free thine own from Satan's deep running from depths of hell thy people see and give them victory
Amen. We're going to enter a time of prayer, so I'd invite you to take a seat. morning. I'm Brent Lancer, one of the elders here, and it's my privilege to lead you in prayer this morning. But uh, before we do that, I'd like to invite anyone who has a special prayer request to just stand where you're at. You don't need to verbalize it. Um, some people will gather around you and pray with you uh, as we pray together. So if you would like to do that this morning, you can go ahead and stand. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you this morning with thanks and with praise. As we come to this time of year, we remember and celebrate your coming to this earth as a baby, the God of the universe, to become a man, to walk in this world, to show us how to live, to die on a cross for our sins, and to be raised again to give us life. And all this before we even cared or wanted you to. You're a marvelous God and worthy of our praise. But Lord, we're still human. We walk in our own ways and desires. We ask your forgiveness for that. Help us to learn each day to walk more closely with you and to be more dependent on you. Father, because of what you've done for us, Help us to be a people that desires to share your good news to those around us, whether they live next door or across the world. Help us to find ways to share your love and grace so that others may know and walk with you as well. Father, be with those who have traveled to other parts of the world to share your gospel message. We think of the churches in the Czech Republic and John and Joe Beth Lee in Japan. Bless each one in their work there. May hearts be changed and people become your followers because of their willingness to go and share your message. Father, be with those in our government as people begin to make decisions on who to elect. Lord, place those in office not for our convenience, but that your message of love and grace could be heard by more and that more people would have the opportunity to follow you. Father, I ask that you would be with those in our body that need you in a special way. Be with those uh, who are standing. Lord, uh, we don't know what their need is, but we know uh, that you already know and you're already working in their lives. Just uh, give them patience and understanding and uh, help them to lean on you. We thank you for, uh, for Ashlyn and Quentin and their wedding yesterday. Just be with them as they grow together. Help them grow in you as well and to serve you wherever you place them. Be with Pat Mitchell as she continues to recover from surgery. Give her strength. Be with Larry and Twyla in the loss of their grandson. Give them peace and comfort in this hard situation. And for any in our body who are lonely, depressed, grieving during this Christmas season, Father, be with them. Let them feel your strength and your comfort. And allow us, as brothers and sisters, to reach out and show your love to all we come in contact with. That this season may be about you and all you've done for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we re-enter into worship. Last week, Dane, um, Dane's message had a song that was not part of it. It was called, O Come All Ye Unfaithful. And... We're singing the traditional version this morning, but I invite you that um, to take this time to really take whatever distractions or whatever things you have brought into this place. Um, and there's lots of distractions time here. I just invite you to use this time as Chris leads us to just strip that away and to take time to remember and give worship to our King. Let's sing as Chris leads us.
gather. We celebrate and remember your birth. But more than that, God, we thank you for the gift and what that meant for us. Because without, without your son Jesus coming for us, God, we would be lost and hopeless, adrift and a slave to our sin. So Jesus, this morning we sing these songs of your birth. We sing these praises to you. We pray that above all, that you would be glorified and honored this morning. Pray all these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dane Shout, the senior pastor here. I welcome you this morning. Hey, if you brought your Bibles or have your Bibles on your phone or an app, turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We will be landing there in just a moment. Um, you see on the screen, it is the third Sunday of Advent. For those of you who uh, grew up in that tradition of uh, observing the Advent calendar, it's called the Shepherd's Candle. It's also called the, the Joy Candle. And um, we uh, have experienced a lot of joy here at Liberty um, when it comes to weddings. Uh, three weddings in five weeks um, that were completely associated with either Pastor Rob or myself um, officiating. So, um, uh, and then there's been two or three other weddings of, of children, of um, children that either grew up in this church or children of parents who grew up in this church. So, um, just a lot of weddings here in the past few weeks. But congratulations to Pastor Rob and uh, Shannon and Ashlyn and Quentin were married yesterday, uh, Miller. So Pastor Rob, um, you know, just, just sort of poke him every now and then because uh, he's not only had to do his normal duties, he's had to officiate a wedding and uh, get a wedding ready and to, to go. So um, congratulations to them. Um, the adrenaline probably will officially run out here in about five minutes, so um, just uh, be with him. Um, many of you uh, have, have heard of the, uh, a long song, but um, if you are looking and still looking with only a week left for something really creative and original to buy for your true love, um, then something I have for you which is truly unique. If you would like the most unique gift, why don't you give them everything that's included in the 12 days of Christmas? All right? Every year, um, there is a financial planning place that will basically tell you how much it will cost you if you were to buy all the things in the obnoxiously long song known as the 12 uh, Days of Christmas. Now, I'm going on a bunny trail here, but in my opinion, there's only two other songs that are more long and annoying than the 12 Days of Christmas. Um, Piano Man by Billy Joel and Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin, but uh, that's just simply my opinion. Long, obnoxious, annoying. But um, another picture is... Uh, you see on the screen, uh, these are actually cookies that someone uh, basically decorated and created based on the 12 days uh, of Christmas. But you'd have to splurge a little bit to buy your true love, all the lavish gifts mentioned in the 12 days of Christmas. The cost reached an all-time high in 2023. If you'd like to buy all the items in the 12 days of Christmas, drum roll please, Next slide, it will cost you $46,729. I don't even know how you can even obtain some of these things. I mean, buying lords that are leaping, where do you go? But uh, for 40 years, PNC, a financial services company, has released its index as sort of a tongue-in-cheek pun to measure inflation because, you know, financial services guys have nothing else to do in December, especially with uh, January coming up and end of the year stuff. Uh, the index is based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index. So they started doing this as sort of an accountant's version of, of humor. Accountants have different humor. To poke fun at the compute, uh, Consumer Price Index. And so for 40 straight years, they have let us know that uh, 
what it would cost if you bought all these things. Uh, for example, inflation took place this year. The partridge in a pear tree is up 13.9% from 2022. Because not of the rise in prices of partridges, but the rise in prices of the pear tree in which they are supposed to roost. It went up 13.9%. The two turtle doves saw the highest price jump. They jumped 25% in value, which PNC says reflects their rarity. If you think 46729 is high, just wait until you see the true cost, which is on the bottom level. That's taking all the entire song and adding it together 12 times. Now, for those of you who cannot figure that number on the top of your head, that comes out to 364 different items. If you want to buy all 364 items for your true love, it will cost you $210,972. It's worth mentioning that despite the record high price in 2023, the Christmas price index, as they refer to, increased by 2.7% from last year. In 2022, it went up 10.5%, a total increase of 13.2% over the last uh, two years. Basically, PNC estimates how much it would cost for the 12 days of Christmas. In Luke chapter 2, you and I are able to look at some words which describe something that is priceless, goes way beyond the price of the 12 days of Christmas. I call them the 12 words of Christmas. Now, it depends on your translation. Remember, the, the New Testament, including Luke chapter 2, was written in a different language, the Greek. And so basically, our English is just a translation. So um, the Greek did not have these 12 words. There are fewer words. But uh, the ESV translates these 12 words of Christmas, actually as 14 words. So I'm going to be using the Christian Standard Bible, which is a very solid translation, because they actually do make it the 12 priceless words of Christmas. So I'm going to be reading out the Christian Standard Bible, and I'm going to be reading um, verses 8 through 14. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. It says, In the same region there were shepherds that were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, and they were praising God, and they were saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace, and peace on earth to the people that he favors. This is the word of the Lord. But the 12 words of Christmas can be found in verse 11. And, and these are priceless words. These are the greatest priceless gift that you can ever possess. And the 12 words of Christmas in verse 11 are, a Savior was born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord. The 12 words of Christmas, absolutely priceless words. In, in 12 concise words, the angel communicates to these downtrodden, socially outcast shepherds. Basically, in 12 words, let me explain what is taking place right now. Why has this Savior come? Who is this Savior? Why is it significant? Why is it important? In 12 words, the angel basically communicates to the shepherds why the Savior has come, who the Savior is, and why is this so important? 
Well, number one, this baby that was wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger, as it says in those last three words, is Messiah the Lord. That is significant. In many translations, he is Christ the Lord. If you were a person in the Jewish tradition, you had been waiting centuries for this. Because God, for centuries in the past, had promised, I am going to send a Messiah. And prophecy after prophecy after prophecy in the Old Testament over the centuries promised the same exact thing. And some of those prophecies getting extremely specific on who exactly this Messiah, this Christ the Lord would be. So basically, when they communicate to these shepherds who were basically raising the sheep for the sacrifices of the Jewish people, uh, they certainly would have heard about the centuries-old prophecy that God has promised a Messiah. And so the angels are simply communicating to them, what you have heard has now taken place. The long-awaited Messiah that had been promised by God for centuries has come. The one who would rescue God's people has come. The great prophet, priest, and king, all in one person, has come. And so basically they communicated that God has kept his promise. And even though... It was centuries in coming, and even though there was 400 years without a prophetic voice from the Lord, now after 400 years of silence, the, the Messiah has come. But even more astounding in these 12 words is not only Messiah, not only Christ, but the last two words, this Messiah, this Christ, is the Lord. This is Emmanuel. As the angel had told someone else, Emmanuel, this is, this is God in the flesh. So this Messiah is not just going to be this, this ruling leader. This Messiah is God in the flesh. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the prophet Isaiah had proclaimed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, a child will be born, a son will be given to us, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be named Wonderful Counselor. And then there's this next one. He will be Mighty God. Nowhere in the Old Testament is that title given to anybody but Elohim, the God of creation, the God who created the universe. And so basically this prediction is, is this child to be born will literally be God in the flesh. In John chapter 1, John, one of the disciples of Jesus, refers to Jesus with the, the phrase, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, he was with God from the very beginning. All, all things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And then just a few verses later, John says this, this Word which is God, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have observed his glory. The glory is the one and only Son from the Father. In the book of Hebrews, writing to a mainly Jewish type of audience, the writer says, Long ago God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets. He did this at different times, and he did this in different ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, Jesus. God has appointed him to be the heir of all things and made the universe through him. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact impression, expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful worlds. And after making purification for sins... He, Jesus, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. 
Now, you, you and I, no matter how theologically grounded you are, no matter how much of the scriptures you know, you will never ever begin to be able to comprehend how can this Jesus be fully God and fully man. You'll never comprehend it completely. But it's what the scriptures teach. And so by faith, the Christmas story is about God in the flesh, Emmanuel, and the, the amazing thing about it is the humility of it. Do you realize that just down the road for where, where Jesus was born was a huge, magnificent palace for the Roman royalty? Could have been very easily been born there and still fulfilled the prophecies. But instead, God in the flesh, born in basically a feeding trough for animals. And then, in this 12 words of Christmas, you see that phrase, the first two words, a Savior. This is why He has come. That word Savior basically says that something is required that you and I cannot provide. The only time you ever need something called a Savior is if you need saved from something. And so the title, A Savior Has Been Born, is basically referring to Christ as this is the one who will be able to save you from the condition that all mankind, every single one of us, has, and that is the condition of sin. And basically, from at the very basic, basic level, sin is not just something we yawn about, not something we put on the run, but the, the basic definition of sin is rebellion against the God who created me. So, the best word to use for sin in its place is rebellion. Rebellion against the one who created us. Rebellion against the one who deserves to be worshipped. So the one who saves humanity from the deserved consequences of sin is this Savior. We can't save ourselves through good works, through morality, through religion. None of that is going to earn your way back into God's reconciled relationship. No, you, you need a Savior. And so what you see is you, you see the, uh, the line of Scripture continue after the birth of Christ. You see Him living a perfect life, which allows Him to become a perfect sacrifice, which allows Him to be the perfect sacrifice and pay the penalty as our substitute for our sins because you and I cannot save ourselves. And so the storyline is He's born, God in the flesh, but that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is that he dies on the cross as our substitute, as the only one who is able to do that. He's buried for three days, and to prove that he's the real deal, he rises in three days and now is in glory. When the angel that appeared to Joseph told him about who this child would be, the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So the 12 sweet, priceless words of Christmas. A Savior was born for you, and this Savior is Christ the Messiah, or, or Messiah, or Christ the Lord. So how, how do we apply this to our lives? How do we apply the 12 words of Christmas to our lives? I think there's two possibilities depending on who you are and where you're at this morning. 
The first way is maybe you need to give this priceless gift to yourself. Now, this is confession time. Um, you know, it's tradition in our family so that we're not guessing with four children. It's tradition in our family to give everybody our Christmas wish list. And I have been guilty more than once of saying, well, I need it now. It might be the first week of December, the second week of December. I, I need this article of clothing or this tool or this something. I need it now. So I will go out and buy it for myself. And that's not well received in the family. Why did you buy something for yourself two weeks before Christmas? Why didn't you just put it on the list? Well, I needed it now. Or I thought I did. It's okay to give yourself this gift for Christmas. If you're a person here today and have never fully understood what it meant that a Savior was born and what he did through his life and what he did on the cross, maybe the greatest gift that you can give, actually, would be this gift to yourself. The gift of eternal life that only comes through faith in Christ. It's a free gift. It's a priceless gift but it's free to you. The only thing you have to do is accept, to receive by faith this gift that's being offered to you. This gift where it says, I, Jesus, already paid the penalty for your sin. I did this because of my love and my mercy towards you. I did this because this was God's plan from the very beginning, that in your rebellion against God, God in His grace and mercy still paid the price for your sin. And so, quite honestly, the best gift that you could ever give yourself or give is to give it to yourself. But you have the choice. You can either accept it or reject it. But basically, that's the storyline of what Christianity is all about. A Savior has been born to you, and that Savior is Christ the Lord. Twelve words, the gospel. Have you personally embraced this Jesus as your Savior? Have you personally come to a point in your life where you say, yes, I give you my life. From this point on, I'm going to love you, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to worship you. Because it's only through you that I can have life. You created me to be in relationship with the God of the universe. And the only way I can enter into that reconciled relationship is through Christ. It's the most priceless, precious gift you can ever give. And it's free. Came at a huge cost to Jesus. Free to you. Number two. Maybe... You're sitting here today, as many of us have, and we've come to that point where we've had to humble ourselves and realize, yeah, I, I need a Savior. And maybe either this week or 50 years ago, you made the decision to follow Christ. Well, I still believe this passage has application for you. Now, maybe you've already received this priceless gift of salvation that comes through Christ. Well, then you have an obligation you have an obligation to share this free gift with others. Look at verses 16 through 20. These socially outcast, looked down upon by the rest of society, shepherds, experience the Christ child. And in verse 16 through 20, it tells you how they responded. It says, they, the shepherds, hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying by the manger. And after seeing them, they reported this message. They were told about this child. 
And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart, and she was meditating on them. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. So pray for an opportunity. Christmas time is many times a wonderful opportunity where people's hearts are at least a little bit more receptive to hearing this news. But pray for an opportunity. Lord, um, when I get together with my families, my relatives, when, I, when I'm at work, in my neighborhood, as I, as I take them a plate of 12 days of Christmas cookies or something like that. Lord, I pray that your spirit would, would just open their hearts a crack or open their hearts fully. Lord, give me, give me the courage to just simply share that a Savior is born and this Savior is Christ the Lord. No matter what the consequences might be, this is the most priceless, eternal gift that you can ever give to someone else, is that good news of what Christ has done. So just simply pray for an opportunity or opportunities in this week where, where maybe people might be a little bit more softened and sensitive uh, to hearing the good news, the 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 why behind Christmas, why Christmas, why Jesus, and what's this all about, and be able to share it when the Lord gives you the opportunity to do it. So we have these 12 words of Christmas. They are priceless. They are far, far of greater value and worth than the 12 days of Christmas. And may you and I Rejoice in that as we celebrate the Christmas season. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for giving us your word. And we, we thank you that for people like us, just like uh, uh, the shepherds, that you've given us just a very simple explanation through what the angels said to the shepherds, a, a very simple explanation of what you were willing to do in order to reconcile us back to yourself. We thank you for sending your son Jesus. We thank you for the life that he lived, which allowed him to be the perfect sacrifice. We thank you that he was willing to go to the cross, that he was willing to not only suffer excruciating pain while on the cross, but he also experienced himself paying the penalty for every sin that I've ever committed, past, present, future. And that he was willing to that. And Lord, that three days later, in victory, he rose from the dead and now is exalted on high. Lord, that's who we worship. That's who we praise. That's who we give our lives to. Lord, I pray that you would open up hearts around us during this Christmas season so that we could share that a Savior has been born and that Savior's name is Jesus Christ the Lord. We pray this in His name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we respond by singing about the joy that we have in Christ.
rehearsal on Thursday night we were talking about our favorite Christmas movies and one that's a favorite in my family that I did not enjoy as a kid but I appreciate more now 
is It's a Wonderful Life. And it ends with this song where they're all singing um, all the anxiety in the home. And the song we're going to close out today uh, is a special one. It's by Ren Collective, and it's called For All That You Have Done. So it's to the tune of Old Lang Syne, but it was turned into a worship song. And every year for New Year's, our family does a special trip with a bunch of friends, and we always sing this song um, like right before midnight just to kind of give God glory for what he's done through the past year um, to grieve the things that have been really hard, uh, to kind of remember the losses that we've had, but also to give him praise regardless. So we're going to do this family style. So what I'm going to have you do is if you're able, I'm going to ask you to slide in to the middle of the auditorium. So just take your row. If you're in these two sections, I'm going to ask you to slide in. If you've got a coffee cup or something on the ground, snag that. If you're in the balcony, if you can do it safely, come on into the middle section. And we're going to sing this song together and give God praise for what he's done for us as a church family this year.
said to them, do not be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to the people he favors. And when the angels left and they had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go and see what has happened, which the Lord has made to know to us. And they hurried off and they found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after seeing them, they reported this message that they were told about this child. May you and I also proclaim this message that people so desperately need to a world that is waiting. We pray this all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed at this time. Please greet one another as you leave.